Hey all viewers, today I will be talking about um, the crone who was Ronnie's mentor. Um, we read about her as far as I know in one item description or, or at least a few item descriptions. Uh, many having to do with um, the sorceries, the snow, the ice sorceries. So there are some definite implications that we can draw from this, from the I, from this whole mention of a crone and and a few other things. Um, so in this topic, we're going to be talking about archetypes and. When archetypes are used in the particular way in which they're used in Elden Ring, especially in the case of the crone, the crone is not talked about very, well, not at all. We only read about her. But you're going to see how when we put all of the information that we have together, we're going to be able to basically have a very clear outline about who this crone is, about the personality of the crone, and about Ronnie's personality. Now that is very interesting, to be entirely honest. Now, um, per adventure, some of you are knowledgeable about what an archetype is. We have here from WordWeb, um, this is something that serves as a model or a basis for making copies. In other words, in the narrative sense, we have something in the world, real world that is being used in a narrative way to sort of how would it be said, act as sort of a copy or sort of replacement in a fictional sense for that thing. Now, right here in the Snow Rich's robe, it reads, once worn by the snowy crone, who the young Ronnie encountered deep in the woods, she was a witch and well-versed in cold sorceries. It is said that the doll that houses Ronnie's soul was modeled after her. That old witch was Ronnie's secret mentor. Now, um, that is quite interesting because secrecy is also something related to the archetype that we're going to talk about in question. Now, the definition of crone is um, a term of abuse for a cantankerous or withered woman. Um, literally carrion, which is sort of the dead meat, basically, is what carrion is that vultures and other animals sort of eat. Uh, how unappealing. So, you know, there is one particular crone who is associated with the dark moon, and some of you who may be per peradventure familiar with witchcraft or Greek mythology, you already know. It is Hecate. Um, Hecate the crone who rules the waning and dark moon um, this is taking a real world concept and you know putting it in the game in the narrative sense those of us who are familiar with Wicca witchcraft um, and some other matters in which particular Greek gods or goddesses are talked about this is quite easy for us to understand um, that comes from the Encyclopedia of Witches, Witchcraft and Wicca by Rosemary Ellen Guiley. Now, who is Hecate? Hecate was a Greek goddess of the moon and spirits. Dogs were sacred to her. Um, now, interesting when you consider that Ronnie is very close to, to Blad, Blad um, she gives us a spirit ash that allows us to summon wolf spirits. Um, now, a wolf is not a dog, but a wolf is basically very close to a dog. You know, they are very familiar creatures. So, um, in this case, that can also be a component of of how we think about Ronnie, of... Um, it has some significance, to be entirely honest. Um, so the English translation of Elden Ring has been really degraded by the naysayers 
who are basically unhappy about the English translation of Ronnie's ending. They believe because apparently, in their opinion, the implications of it are, are different. It is more strongly worded than the Japanese translation. They think, oh, this is obviously a mistake. This is wrong. But let me be honest. I am saying that, you know, the English translation of Elden Ring is masterfully written. To be entirely honest, they, they have given us all of the archetypes, as far as I can see, very clearly. The narrative elements are there, and they have been sort of expertly given to us. And if anything, truth be told, I have read the translation for the Japanese ending of Ronnie, of the Japanese ending that, that is associated with Ronnie. I did not think that... I did not really... I thought that they both basically had the same type of meaning. Ronnie is taking the golden order to the stars. You know, she is basically leaving, you know, the lands between with the protagonist who is coming with her as, you know, her spouse, it would seem. Um, so Ronnie has always been selfish, but... Um, personally, I, I personally like and appreciate the English ending more. So those of us who really approve of the English ending and we do not agree with the naysayers who say, oh, the English en ending was written horribly. Miyazaki worked with George R. R. Martin to create this narrative, to create the environment. Okay, they have been working... Um, on their products that were like this since Dark Souls. And for those of us to say, oh, the English ending is so harsh, it makes Ronnie out to seem to be evil. Well, we're, we are going to see by the usage of this crone archetype that that is not necessarily such a, you know, such a wrong opinion. Or not necessarily such a um, such a wayward assumption, so to speak. So um, the word crone was is it is exactly what we needed to understand that the crone being referred to is is basically we know Ronnie is associated with the, with the dark moon. We know Hecate is associated with the dark moon, and therefore. Based on what I can see, it is obvious that that crone, in a narrative sense, is Hecate. Her secret teacher is Hecate. So if Hecate is her teacher, Hecate is teaching her her own values are becoming impressed upon Ronnie. So the idea is, is that this crone, if we understand who this crone is, we can understand who Ronnie is, to be honest. Um, we can understand her Weltanschwung, and that is a German word for worldview um so this is why we should definitely we, we should look at different books different cultural you know materials to understand the story um and it is interesting that fromsoft has never said to the fan base that the english ending for ronnie was wrong as far as i know that fromsoft has never made an opinion about that it was the press that that really were promoting this idea that our English translation was not as FromSoft intended it to be. And some people, peradventure, do not really take this into consideration that in some cases, particular translations could very well, because of the artist's sort of preference, be translated differently in other languages just because that is the way they want to tell the story. Which, you know, I mean, for example, there was a book, a particular book that was fictional, but apparently there was both a male and female version of that book. And the artist had decided, I want to write a particular version of this book for men and a particular version of this book for women. However, the book is basically going to be the same, but one part of it is going to be in this book and it's going to be slightly different, ever so slightly different. 
That person made a conscientious decision to do that. Now, some of you may say, well, why would Miyazaki or George R.R. R. Martin want to do anything sort of like that? Well, maybe they could, but even so, as far as I'm concerned, Ronnie's intentions are so clear. Ronnie um, is, she does not necessarily care about the lands between in general. She wants to basically leave it with the Golden Order um, and that has a lot of implications. Um, but anyhow, Hecate, Hecate and the Dark Moon, they are often associated with dark, dark magic. Black magic in particular, I mean to say. It is very important that I say black magic because this is a very, you know, prevalent term in witchcraft. So we have here the Dark Moon when the face of the moon is hidden is also known as the dead moon. It takes place precisely three days before a new moon and is considered to be the most magical and potent of all the phases. Sadly, many people who practice black magic do so at this time. You might think that someone working on the darker side of the occult could not influence any spells or rituals that you might be performing, but the collective power mustered by these individuals can cause cosmic havoc. Our spells may become confused or simply not work at all. Now this is from Liana Magical, or at least, no, that's the author's name. Um, this is from Wikipedia, A Modern Day White Witch's Guide. Okay. Um, now this is a Wiccan book. Some of you may or may not know about the very new religion of Wicca. R Wicca is a very is a fairly new religion. It was created by a man who apparently wanted to sort of mix some pagan ideas and sort of make for themselves a modern day pagan religion, so to speak. Um, it is not an old religion, despite what any of the Wiccans say. It was, you know, it is not very old. You can do your own research about that. Um, However, they practice uh, what may be called witchcraft. Um, and so we consult their books as well. So apparently, this is a white witch. White witches consider themselves to be, for lack of a better word, good witches. Even though Wiccans, for the most part, don't really, many Wiccans apparently do not really even believe in the concepts of good and evil. But that is a whole other matter to discuss. Anyhow, um, magic, sometimes it is spelt with a K. It is divided into two categories of color. Now, you may have heard about green magic, red magic, and other things that some witches like to talk about. Traditionally, there are two. And basically, it's this, this, this idea of left and right, of dexterous and sinistral. Dexterous means um, right, and sinistral means left. Sin it the word sinister comes from the word sinistral. Um, basically, the, there's this idea that white magic is good, black magic is bad. That white is good, black is bad. Um, which, th that is just the idea. That is the concept. Uh, um, it does not have anything to do with race. It is just the way that magicians have sort of sorted those two ideas. You know, uh, magic is a very vague term that has very little to do with its etymological root. In other words, the word magic comes from a word that means a very different things from what the meaning is often used, um, that, from the meaning that is often used for it. However, there's a myriad of mean meanings for the word magic. It is such a vague, abstract term that I can't really explain what magic is to you, um, to be honest. It could basically be anything. I'm not even joking. Um, but, I mean, there are some definitions we have here from the Etymology Dictionary. Um, magic, art of influencing events and producing marvels. Um, from French, old French magic, magic uh, I guess that's how you pronounce it. The Q may be pronounced differently anyhow. Um, Latin magic, uh, Greek magic, 
Magikos. But basically it comes from the Persian Magus. Magus. The, the sort of uh, magi, wise men. And, you know, that does not really even imply an action, so to speak. So the word magic has a very shaky, you know, the it doesn't really mean much. It means different things to different people. Um, this whole game has to do with magic. Elden Ring has a lot to do with magic, um, obviously, but, you know, they apply very real world understandings to the idea of magic, okay? Um, so we know that the worldview of Ronnie is basically the same as her mentor, so, you know, Ro she has the character of Hecate, okay? Hecate is often associated with other moon goddesses. So Hecate in Greek religion, once again, we're reading more about Hecate from the Columbia Cy Encyclopedia. Um, Hecate in Greek religion and mythology is the goddess of ghosts and witchcraft. Originally, she seems to have been extremely an extremely powerful and benevolent goddess. Um, identified with three other goddesses, Selene in heaven, Artemis in Ur on earth, and Persephone in the underworld. From the three, supposedly came her image in Greek art as a figure with three bodies or three heads. Generally, she is identified as a spirit of black magic. Persephone's attendant um, with the power to conjure up dreams, phantoms, and the spirits of the dead. In the upper world, she haunted, she haunted graveyards and crossroads and was invisible to all eyes except those of the hounds who attended her. Um, now, Hecate is the goddess, the Greek goddess of magic, sorcery, and the moon, the, and the moon, associated with the moon before and after it sets. Also called Antaya, she who encounters you, which, um, Hecate is portrayed as having snakes in her hair. She carries a torch and is associated by a howling pack of dogs, this goddess of the crossroads. She was called Enodia or Triaditos or was depicted as three-headed or having three bodies, maiden, matron, and ancient crone. Okay, in this case, the aspect that we are focusing on is the crone. We're focusing on the ancient crone. The crone is the one that we are interested in and the one of, of which, of whom we wish to understand the character um, of this particular individual. Now, we would say that it is interesting that, you know, um, Ronnie sort of is this, the first one to give us the, the, um, the, the bell that is able to summon spirits. What is it called? The spirit summoning bell or something like that. Uh, spirit caller bell or something. Um, she is the one to give us that. And she is the one to give us our first pair, our first at spirit ashes, which are wolves, a pack of wolves. So we're able to see the connection between Ronnie, Ronnie and her mentor in Hecate, um, we are seeing very traditional connections. So Ronnie, she is associated with, with snow and coldness. Ronnie displays a cold disposition. We all know this. She's kind of, we can sort of tell that she's not a warm, she does not have a warm personality. Um, so... We can understand the connection between Hecate and cold by understanding what some Wiccans know about her. Um, Wiccans consider Hecate, they consider her to be an aspect of their mother goddess. And as far as I know, their mother goddess is comprised of three moon goddesses. Um, so the mother goddess herself exists in a state of flux. Another constant tenet of Wiccan energy and practice, as does the universe, as do the seasons. 
as do the phases of the moon. When she is young, as in the springtime, she is full of promise and bursting with fertile energy, an image of the ver- virginal maiden frolicking in the field. When she is the mother, having reached the fruition of her fertility, as in summer and fall, she nurtures and punishes in equal measure. Remember the universe is in flux, and there are no absolutes, according to Wiccans. Okay, um, but this nurturing mother, Earth figure, balanced by the ferocity of the mother of mother of that of Mother Nature, can sometimes unleash overseas the sowing of um, the fields and the reaping of the harvest. She is central to all life when she is the crone. Um, when she is the crone in her old age, she hibernates with the winter, gathering her wisdom close to her. She can be cold and spiteful, like the winds howling outside. And that does seem somewhat like Ronnie, because Ronnie, not that, you know, there are things that she does that seem somewhat spiteful, um, in my opinion. But, you know, everyone can be the judge of that, okay? But anyhow, if you hear a dog in the background, please do not worry about that. Um, Sadly, that's just the case. Okay, that's from Wicca Witchcraft Mastery. Um, Now, also about things being in a state of flux. Wiccans, like many other particular individuals who practice magic so to speak or are sort of proponents of particular philosophies um, having to do with feminine goddesses they apparently think that the nature of reality is not ordered but rather is chaotic but that is just based on what I know so they really take and take a real sort of how should I say um, this idea of flux in nature is so, sort of, in a sense, one of their fundamentals. Not to say that there is not an order to the seasons, but I have a good deal of research to do about that. But anyhow, let me continue. Um, we have the Glintstone Ice Crag, and um, let us see. Uh, Sorcery said to be used by the old Snow Witch. All of these spells that are associated with the Snow Witch, with the Crone, um, they all have to do with cold. They all have to do with ice. They all have to do with freezing. Um, so, let's see. The Snowy Crone taught the young Ronnie to fear the Dark Moon as she imparted the, her the cold sorcery. So... Coldness has some some interesting implications, some interesting connotations, and they are sinister. Um, cold does not really have many positive connotations at all, especially when you compare it to warmth. Um, so it hath a forbidden and forbidding and unwelcoming character. Um, cold people are not people you necessarily want to be around, or at least most people do not want to be around a people, um, cold people. So the idea that we can use, imagine, for example, a person with their cold hand touches your face. Now, I cannot imagine that that would be something that anyone would really like. Um, many of us, we like people who, you know, they're warm in personality and warm in regard to body heat even. If someone touches you, you would, you, you would not like it if they touched you with, cold, with a cold hand. You, it would feel far better if a person touched you with a warm hand. Um, oftentimes, that is the case, I would imagine. I mean, I, don't, I do not know of anyone, really. I cannot imagine anyone who wants to be touched by cold people. So this has, this has social implications. It also has physical implications. And it has sensual implications, which go into the realm of the sexual, even. But let us talk about some some examples of that. So here we have from Historical Dictionary of Witchcraft, in particular Gregory, 
described a heretical gathering preceded over by a demon in the shape of a giant toad. A giant toad, I mean. I hope I pronounced it right. Sorry if I slurred the words a bit. Um, uh, new members of this heretical set, sect had to, had to kiss this creature and also a pallet man whose kiss was as cold as ice. Um, so if female witches were also were often thought to submit sexually to the devil himself, whose member, phallus or penis, was typically described as being cold as ice. Very disturbing, but I think you get the idea. Cold is not something typically associated with comfort. Cold is not something typically associated with good social acumen or even just welcoming character. Cold people are people who you do not often want to be around, or that is the case with most people. Now, I imagine there are some people who like being around cold people. I'm not one of them. (laughs) Okay, Ronnie and her mentor are cold. The more concrete gameplay aspect of cold sorcery and the figurative aspect, okay, it, it plays a role in Ronnie in the personality of Ronnie in the narrative. So we have um, we have heard in past games about what would basically this idea of fear of the old blood, fear of the fire, you know, um, we are born of the blood, made men by the blood, undone by the blood. Our eyes are yet to open. Fear the old blood in Bloodborne. Okay, Willem is talking about this old blood. And blood and fire are somewhat related to an extent. Some people consider fire and to consider some people consider blood a type of fire, even. In other words, people consider blood to since it gives life people connect um fire the liveliness of fire in the blood in in a few different ways so have heed my words unkindled one fear the fire the home of pyromancy isolof was scorched by the very fire it created undoubtedly it was the flame of chaos tangled by a witch's hand but who's to say that this bonfire's flame is any different. Okay. Excuse the weird voice, but we know that that, that is Cornix from the Great Swamp, um, from Dark Souls 3. So fear is stated in the, this whole sense of there's a feeling of dread and reverence. You know, whether it, it's towards God or any rightful authority. Um, now the Dark Moon... It is not considered to be lucky. It's not considered to be auspicious. Black magic itself is considered to be basically evil, basically harmful. Black magic is, witches sort of talk about black magic as, a lot of them do not like to call it evil, but that is basically, if we're going to choose one or the other and call it good or evil, basically black magic is what you use to hurt people with. So if we want to keep it simple, Black magic is considered evil. White magic is considered good. We can cut through the sort of mystery that some witches like to put in front of that whole idea of black and white magic. We are trying to understand the narrative basis, you know, of some of these concepts. So, you know, and a lot of that is also, in a sense, the dynamic between white and black magic is presented in Demon Souls quite well, actually, and many other media, to be honest. Now, many men, we're going to read this quote from the Wicca Witchcraft Mastery. Many men and women say it isn't a good idea to work magic at this instance. I really don't agree. I feel this is the ideal time for the great disruptive magic. Be aware that damaging do, that damaging does not imply harmful. You don't need to kill a person, but when you wish to throw a curse, then it could be the very best time. Now, basically, witches believe that during a dark moon, it's the best time to curse, kill, or do any type of you know 
some of you may or may have not have heard of magical so assassination. There are people who who do believe they can work with spirits and kill a person, harm a person, give a person cancer, um, make a person have a miscarriage. This is serious stuff. And if you do not believe it, read about some of the history of voodoo. Okay? And not just voodoo, many other witches all over the world use what is called black magic. Now, if you are like me and you're, you are... Uh, a Quaker type Christian whatnot we have no fear and are not intimidated by such things because God is in us Jesus Christ you know is in us and he is guiding us you know and we have no fear of magic or witchcraft and you know some witches have tried to cast spells on you know people like myself and it just doesn't work but hey, you know, that's just my own personal experience with it. Um, and nor do we need such things. Um, but anyhow, basically this describes the nature of what we are discussing. What is she afraid of? What does the dark moon represent in witchcraft? Um, it represents, it's, it's associated with, with black magic. Okay, it's associated with curses and also secrecy. Um, so if you're fearing a dark moon, what you're fearing is the quintessence of all that is malefic, the very essence of black magic. And to some extent, the dark moon has to do with secrecy as well, keeping secrets, keeping magical secrets, keeping um, particular pagan mysteries away from the profane so to speak um, and the profane is a derogatory term that particular people who practice um, magic and practice particular um, what may be called the mystery schools or the craft they like to call people who do not practice their you know magic or even Christians they like to call them profane um, and so that is their word for people so, you know, taking, taking all of this together um, to sketch the character of Ronnie based on what we know, we know that she is cold. We know that little doll is a cold little doll and that she's also cold in a figurative sense, in a, in a personality sense, she is cold. She works for her own interests and is not adverse to cursing and harming others. She keeps secrets. She plots, just like in the case of the Black Knives, and we're going to talk about that at some point later. Um, she plots, she shows imperious condescension towards her peers. The fervent proponents of Ronnie, they're going to always disagree. However, this is what we have, and we have to examine it honestly. I had a very good discussion with DIR1475 um, about this whole matter. It was very interesting. Um, but yes, um, a lot of people in the community, they do not want to at all sort of acknowledge that Ronnie has any type of sinister character, but I think Ronnie is a far better villain when we can admit that Ronnie, you know, she acts pernicious for her own selfish motivations to further her own goals. Um, and as for her ending, I do plan to talk more about her ending at some point. Now, um, there is much more information I would like to collect about Ronnie and the Age of the Stars ending and many other such things. But right now, I do believe if we're talking about Ronnie, we have to start, in my opinion, with the crone. It is best to start with the crone and to understand the character of Ronnie's teacher. Because if we understand the character of the crone, I think we can very easily understand who Ronnie is and what type of character she has. All right, um, this was quite enjoyable. May you be blessed and farewell. All right, yes. <laughs>